Hi achievers and welcome back to your favorite channel by Juice. So we were discussing this chapter is matter around us pure? So we know this by now that matter around us is not completely pure, right? In fact, we have so many mixtures around us. We know about homogeneous mixtures, we know about heterogeneous mixtures and today we have to figure out whether solutions are homogeneous mixtures or heterogeneous mixtures and what exactly are solutions for that matter. So today's agenda is to talk about solutions first of all, then we'll be talking about components of a solution and finally properties of a solution. So we'll be mastering everything about solutions. Alright, what do we have here? Well, the dinner table is all set. In fact, this setup kind of makes me hungry and I'm sure you're feeling the same, right? So many interesting items are there on the table. What should we pick up? Well, let's focus on lemonade because we were already discussing about lemonade in the last class. Now, when you look at a lemonade, you realize that all the substances are uniformly distributed throughout, right? We have the lemon juice and sugar that is being added to water. Now, these are the components of this mixture of lemonade. Now... Just keep looking at a lemonade and you'll realize that there are particles of water present. And in between these particles of water, lemon particles would be there, lemon juice particles and sugar particles or salt particles, whatever you want to add to your lemonade. Now, why are we dissolving everything in water? Why is this happening? Well, water actually, it's a universal solvent and it's a solvent used to make various solutions. Now, I've used two terms over here. I said solvent and I said solution. Now, what is a solvent? What is a solution? And how exactly is a solvent different from a solution? Well, let's see. So, over here, you can see that salt is being added to water, right? And it kind of makes a uniform composition, right? The composition is very much uniform. The composition is same throughout. Seems like homogeneous mixture, right? So, yes, a solution of salt and water is homogeneous in nature. There is no distinct boundary of separation between the particles. It's, it's, it's completely getting dissolved. And this brings us to a very important point that solutions are actually homogeneous mixtures of two or more substances. So there you go. Now you know what solutions are. They're homogeneous mixtures of two or more substances. In this case, the components that we are talking about, they are salt and water. So, they are the components of this solution. So, we have salt, we have water. Let's understand further now. Now, water, it dissolves the salt. Clearly, we know that. And it is present in larger amount. This is also sorted. So, this is being given a name, a term that is solvent in chemistry. So, solvent basically dissolves other components. Now, the second component was salt. Salt is basically getting dissolved in water and it's present in lesser amount. And again, we give it a term in chemistry that is solute. So, solute basically, it's the component that gets dissolved in the solvent. So, in a way, we can say that solute plus solvent together, they will make a solution. Right? Now, Solute in this case is going to be salt. Solvent in this case is going to be water. And solution will be our salty water. So it's very much sorted till here. So I hope now you know what is a solute, what is a solvent and what is a solution. Alright, now in this case, do we always have liquid solutions? Liquid solution means that the solvent is liquid. Is the solvent always going to be liquid when you talk about solutions? Well, let's look at some more examples to figure that out. Alright, let's talk about tincture of iodine. In this, iodine, actually it's the solid solute and alcohol is the liquid solvent. So in this case, the solvent is liquid, therefore it's liquid solution. Next example, we have aerated drinks, everyone's favorite, right? In this case, the solvent that we have is liquid, that is water. And the solute that we have is gaseous carbon dioxide. Again, in this case, the solvent is liquid, therefore this is liquid solution. But this is not the case always. For example, when we talk about air. Now, air is a homogeneous mixture of different gases. So, you have nitrogen, you've got oxygen, carbon dioxide and other gases. In this case, the solvent is a gas. Therefore, this is an example of gas, gaseous solution. 
Now, what is the solvent in this? What is the solute in this? Let's try to figure that out now. So in air, 78% nitrogen is present and 21% oxygen is present. So clearly, you would know that nitrogen is your solvent. And just like we have gaseous solution, we can also have solid solution. So in solid solution, the, in solid solution, the solvent is going to be solid. For example, we have alloys. So alloys are also homogeneous mixtures, right? So there you go. Alloys is the example of a solid solution. So now you know all the solutions. Liquid solutions, gaseous solutions and solid solutions. Now let's talk about the properties as well. Now the first property, let's try to figure that out. When common salt was being added to water, it just uniformly got distributed, right? It was uniform, it was in a way homogeneous because there was no boundary of separation. So this brings us to the very first property of solution that they are homogeneous in nature. Next important property. Now when common salt is being added to water, can you see the particles? Well, the answer is no, right? So particle size is less than 1 nanometer. That means 10 to the power minus 9 meters. And therefore, it cannot be seen by naked eye. So particles are so very small. Next important property. Now, when you try to pass light through a beam of solution, right? If you pass light beam through this solution, what happens? You'll notice that there is no scattering happening over here. So, the particles of the solution, they do not scatter light and the path of light is not visible. That means, in this case, Tyndall effect is not taking place. So, there's a new term out there that you've just learned, Tyndall effect. So, this scattering is basically given a name, Tyndall effect, which is not seen in case of solutions. Now, moving on to the next very important property. Particles of solution cannot be separated by filtration. Again, a very, very important property. The particles are so very small that filter paper will also be of no use, right? So filtration in this case cannot be done. So the method of separation cannot be filtration. Next important property, solution is stable in nature. This means that if you leave the solution undisturbed for some time, the particles are not going to settle down. That means they are very much stable. So there you go. Let's conclude. Let's summarize everything about solutions now. First of all, they are homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Then the particle size is less than one nanometer in diameter. Then particles cannot be seen by naked eye. Then particles do not scatter a beam of light. So the path of light is not visible. And particles cannot be separated by filtration. And finally, it's stable in nature. And with this, we've come to the end of this short session. So yes, I hope you've understood all the properties perfectly fine. And definitely we've got you covered. And before we close, I have a homework question for all of you. So I used Tyndall effect during the session, right? I used this effect and I want all of you to explore more about this. We'll also be talking more about this. So figure out and let me know in the comment section who discovered Tyndall effect. And don't forget to hit the like, share and subscribe button.